Hi, it's Tom from Green Shorts, and I wanted to take this opportunity here in the Christmas season to thank all of you, uh, my subscribers, here on Green Shorts DIY. Usually I'm just making DIY videos, providing some step-by-step -step instructions, um, showing you how I do it, but I don't often take the time to thank you for watching. I do at the end of the videos just saying thanks for watching. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for watching. Thanks so much for watching. But I really am grateful that you watch. The reason I make these videos is because, well, I want you to do more than watch. I want you to to do, to make these things. And, I, you know, I try and make the designs as simple as possible to kind of break down maybe the instruction into simple, easy steps so that the ideas are accessible to as many people as possible. Thank you very much for watching, for um, also for sharing your ideas. I think you often have better solutions to the problems that I'm trying to solve. And um, some of the videos I wanna do in the spring are incorporating some of those uh, suggestions into improvements for stuff that I've built. So I wanted to give you a quick overview of some stuff that is coming up. Um, I also, I, I kind of want to know what videos you would like to see. Uh, I know that everything I make doesn't appeal to everyone, but I want to kind of get a poll here of the type of videos you want to see. So I'm going to tell you about some stuff I've got coming up, but I want you to, in the comments below, tell me what videos you want to see first. All right, here we go. So here's the garden area I'm working on back here. Um, and this is a hugo culture bed here. And I'm going to make a Hugo Culture greenhouse. So over in this section here, to cover this bed and then a second bed that's going to be back in this section, I'm going to dig a trench um, and then build a Hugo Culture bed right here. So my question to you is, do you want to see a video about this? I've got my supplies right here. I'm going to use some used silt fence, some wire that I saved from the silt fence and these logs are some decommissioned mushroom logs that are no longer producing. And then some, some pecan wood that came off a tree that we had to cut down to build the house. If you would like to see a video about the process of making this Hugo Culture greenhouse, let me know in the comments below. Another thing I wanna do over here, even though we are in Georgia, I don't get super cold weather all the time, is I want to build a furnace that will supply heat to the greenhouse. But I also want to use that to fire some clay tiles to do a earthen version of my worm tower. One of the most viewed videos on YouTube right now for me is the making of this worm tower out of PVC pipe. Pretty simple build. Below the grade, the worm tower looks like that which allows the worms to migrate and the nutrients to migrate in and out. And I know some people aren't so thrilled with PVC, so I actually made a, a uh, wooden version of the same thing. So I've got some worms going in there. This was my temporary Orchard Mason Bee house. See the, the roof came off it. And when they were digging the foundation for my house, I saw some orchard mason bees mining that clay and wanted to, to give them a place to, to lay their eggs. So you can see that some of them have hatched out. The empty ones, um, or the open ones, are where the bees have crawled out. And they are amazing pollinators. They're also a native bee here in the United States. If you'd like to see a video about how I made this, or I'm making a, a, a little bit more refined version of this, put that in the comments below. When I build this Hugo Culture bed over here, I'm actually going to take the material out of this Hugo Culture bed. It's really just been cooking here. You can see one of the logs that's in the bed here. 
But the reason I'm going to move this one is because I want this area here to make a keyhole garden. They're round, they have kind of a notch in the end of the center, they use a composting basket in the middle, and then your garden, of course, is around the outside. If you'd like to see a video about making this keyhole garden, actually, I'm probably going to make that video, but I would love to know if you're interested in seeing that. Beginnings of a food forest started here. Um, I've got two apple trees. One is this Anna apple. And then got a Fuji apple down here, smaller. Both of these are low chill, so we don't have enough cold weather in, in Georgia for regular apples that aren't a low chill variety. And then here in the middle, I've got a kumquat, which of course is the only citrus that you can eat the whole thing. The peel is actually sweeter than the flesh. They're small, about the size of a, a cherry tomato, and I'm excited about these. Just a little uh, shroud around this to keep it warm. This is hardy down to 20 degrees, so which we can get to here in Georgia. So I wanted to protect this a little bit more with some mulch and plastic. I just don't want it to get water. Excited about my food forest. I've got my three blueberries over here, which are still pretty small, but we'll be planting some more blueberries as well. All right, let's go behind the wall. So you may have seen the wall in some of my other videos, or at least the beginnings of the wall. I used the concrete forms from my house to make this wall, which is kind of an outdoor room. This area will have a fire pit down here. Still have this deck to finish. And then there will be a, in this opening, there will be a little tea room that's in the plans. But the main reason I put this wall in is so that I have what I call my jurisdiction behind the wall. I gotta warn you, it's a mess back here. So I've got some old doors. Um, all of this stuff has a purpose. You know, chaos theory is that when you a tornado goes through a landfill, that you end up with a 747. So I've got a lot of projects in mind with these materials, and I'll show you the beginning of the Green Shorts Studio. So here is the shed. So I've got my shed roof here in place. And you can see the green shorts set has made it here in a couple parts. We need to rebuild that a little bit before it's ready. But I was able to use the scraps of the roof from my house to roof my uh, shed here. In this corner where we're up against the hill, I'll be using um, making a rocket mass heater uh, to uh, heat this space. Um, and uh, anyway, let me know if you're interested in seeing a video about that. There are a lot of rocket mass videos on YouTube. Don't know if we need another one, but if you're interested in seeing me build it, um, I'd be glad to make a video about that for you. But if you're not, then I will probably skip the video on that just because there's a lot of great ones and I don't know if we need another one. You've probably seen a video on my channel about my cob bread oven. This has been an amazing project to work on um, and I've been using it to make bread and pizza. I've got some cracks in this that I need to repair so I will be doing a video about how I'm repairing these cracks here. The, the stove is a lot thinner in this section, um, which is why I'm seeing some cracking. The, the main body of the stove is six inches thick, and so that's not cracking. So my, one of my more recent videos was the making of my oven tools. I've got the pizza peel here. I've got a swab or a mop that's used to wipe down the the surface of the oven here with water to cool the hearth but also to clean off the ash 
since we're baking bread right down on the hearth. And then the last tool is my, my fire hook, which is a, just a piece of bent metal with a handle that uh, is used to move the fire around the stove. So that just sits up nicely there. So if you're interested in seeing the build video on the stove or the tools, I'll put the links up here for those. And you can check those out. I've got plans available for both of those projects as well. So check those out. Of course, I've got all my scrap wood here from the house project that will be used to fuel my stove. I didn't want to see the trees that were cut down to make this lumber um, go to waste. So all this untreated lumber will be used to fire my bread oven. One of those trees that we had to cut down for the sewer line for our house was this amazing pecan tree. And I've got plans to mill this wood uh, to use it to make stuff. So be watching for more videos in the future, probably further out in the future, um, about that. Something that won't be too far in the future is the introduction of the production model of my rocket stove. Now, not a true 100% rocket stove because it doesn't have the J entry, but this is um, the version of my rocket stove that I'm going to make. So those of you who may not want to actually cut this yourself um, with the plans, um, you can buy it on Amazon. So I'm letting this one sit outside to um, see how the weather affects it. But uh, the idea, of course, this you would keep it inside between burnings or sheltered so that it didn't rust. Just want to see how this does. This is cold rolled steel. Um, it is not treated. It's really hard to keep paint on a surface that gets hot like this. Um, but it, it has this amazing bluing that happens when it's fired. You can see the, um, the bluing of the steel. It's actually beautiful. Um, and you notice the RK there in the intake, the air intake. That's because this stove is called the Rocket King. As soon as I get the product liability insurance worked out, this stove will be available to purchase. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, if you're interested in making one, you can buy the plans. Um, and I'll put the link up here to where you can get the plans. In addition to some of those videos I talked about, I will be doing an updated version of the Black Soldier Fire Larva Composter to greatly simplify that. I had a lot of fun building my BSFL composter. It was one of the longer videos because it was fairly detailed. I like doing things detailed like that to start and then figuring out how I can make it more simple. In fact, one of the comments I got on that video was, instead of using the plastic trash can, why not use a tarp for the composting section? And that was a great suggestion. In fact, the new design is gonna be based around using a tarp for the body of the composter. And in fact, I think that's gonna work really well because it will mimic the carcass of an animal, which is where these solidify larvae are natively going to be found. Um, that's the type of container they're used to being in. So i um, looking forward to doing that. In fact, I'll be piloting um, that design at the city of Atlanta Food Forest, which is a, an urban garden in the city here where I live and that they're just starting. It's actually the largest food forest of any American city. Anyway, so we want to try and scale up the BSFL composting to a larger city scale, which would be an amazing thing to do because they do such a great job of breaking down waste um, and turning it into a beneficial product, which is them, the solidified larva, which can then be a, a source of food for fish or chickens. We'll be updating that design here in the spring. I had a question on a, a video, video recently if I had done that design. It's on paper, but it's not in video form yet. That's coming soon. 
I also want to do an update of my concrete rocket stove, which is also another one of your favorites here on the channel. I'll be doing that without the armature in it and with a couple of suggestions that y'all made in the comments. But the twist I want to put on that is I want to use it to make a pizza oven or to power a pizza oven. I've tried to do pizza in my cob um, oven it doesn't do as well because a pizza oven is really more reflective and um, in, in how it it pushes the heat it reflects the heat down onto the pizza to cook it the cob oven is really more of a heat sink it absorbs heat and then radiates it out during the baking process it's not as efficient or effective as a pizza oven I also want to do a remake of the mud rocket stove you can see here I let my prototype sit outside I wanted to see how it responded to the elements and you can see it's kind of starting to break down a little bit which is understandable because it's made out of earth that's not fired it's not uh, made into ceramic it's just raw so it will break down I want to make another version of this that incorporates some of the comments they all gave me to make it a better design more efficient I also want to incorporate that design into making a balcony size bread oven so using the rocket stove base to heat up a oven top on it to see if we can make a smaller version of a cob bread oven that could be used on the balcony of an apartment just a quick overview of what's coming up here on green shorts DIY and an opportunity to say thank you for being a subscriber and a viewer if you're not a subscriber you can click on the subscribe button below and make sure you click on the bell too because that the bell is what says yes I want to get notified when Green Shorts DIY puts out a new video and as always our mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green green things that you can do in your backyard and your life so that you can be green I want you to not just watch but to also do to make these things to to create sustainability in your life by doing it yourself and we do that also because sustainability can save you money there are lots of things we can do um, in living more sustainably that have a financial impact on our budget on a monthly basis so that can be very gratifying as well as financially beneficial so thanks for watching, please like and share, and subscribe for a new Green Shorts DIY video almost every Friday.